This screencast pertains to materials in Module 2, Lesson 12, where we multiply decimals and whole numbers. All right, there's a number of problems here, and some of them tell you that you can use the area model uh, or the standard algorithm. I'm, I'm going to use both so that we have a, a more thorough review. I think it's good to master both the standard algorithm and the area model. Uh, I'm never going to make you do one or the other in particular. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, it's also a good way to check your answers. If you do it both ways and get the same answer, you can be fairly sure that your answer is correct. But the first thing we're going to do here is to do some estimation. So we have 1 and 3 tenths times 26. We're going to again round each one of these factors to their greatest place and 1 and 3 tenths rounds to 1 and 26 rounds to 30. So we should expect our answer to be somewhere around 30. Let's do this with the area model first. We're going to take that factor, the first factor, or the factor with the decimal, uh, I usually like to use that for the top. We can switch the order of these because of the commutative property. All right, so I'm going to decompose this. I'm going to change 1 and 3 tenths to 13 tenths. I, in essence, did that by multiplying by 10. So my final answer is going to be 10 times greater than the real answer, so I'll, I'll divide by 10 in the end. So let's decompose 13 tenths into 10 tenths and 3 tenths, and we'll write tenths here so we don't forget that we have a conversion at the end. Now we'll decompose 26. All right, <clears throat> we'll start with the top, working from the right, going to the left. So 3 times 6 is 18, and 6 times 10 is 60. Three to or 20 times 3 is 60, and 10 times 20 is 200. We'll find the sum of uh, all of these rows. 60 plus 18 is 78, and 200 plus 60 is 260. Those are our partial products. When we do the standard algorithm, we should see a match. Let's find our full product by adding the two partial products. Get an 8 and a 13. Regroup that one, and I get 338 tenths. Now that's 10 times larger than it should be. So to get it back to standard form, we would divide this by 10 and we would get 33 and 8 tenths. Let's now do the standard algorithm. I have 1 and 3 tenths times 26. And as we go through, we'll look for matches with our partial products in the, in the uh, rectangular model. So I have 6 times 3 is 18. Regroup that 1. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And we can see we have a match. Now let's go and multiply uh, by 2 in the tens place, putting in our 0, because there will be no 1's. So I have 2 tens times 3 1's is 6 tens. And I have 2 tens times 1 ten equals 2 hundreds. And again, we can see that we have a match between our partial products of our a rectangular model and the standard algorithm. So we'll evaluate that. And again, this is tenths, or I had multiplied that with 13, uh, that 1 and 3 tenths times 10 to get 13. We have no decimal here. We're going to divide by 10, and we get 33 and 8 tenths. Now, <clears throat> I also want to point out that we could have used this estimate here to help us find where to put the decimal. If I had no decimal in that, I'll just write the digits. 
Where would I put the decimal to make the answer reasonably close to 30? Well, if I put it between the two threes, that would be nowhere near. That would be 3 and 38 hundredths. That's not very close to 30. If I put it here, I have 33 and 8 tenths. That is close to 30. And of course, if I put it after the 8, I would have 338. That's not a reasonable answer. So remember, we can use estimation as well as uh, some reasoning to place our decimals. Let's do another example. This problem is a little bit different in that our first factor uh, is less than 1. So we're going to have to do some rounding here, and we're going to round to our greatest place. And in this case, my greatest place is the tenths. So I'm going to round that first factor to two tenths. The second factor, I'll round to the nearest ten, and that's ten. Two tenths times ten is two, so our answer should be someplace close to two. Now if I look at uh, this, and I want to change that to my unit form, in a way, uh, I'm kind of thinking uh, we're multiplying by 100 to get 23, and of course that's 23 hundredths. All right, let's uh, use our area model, decomposing our factors. Twenty-three hundredths rounds to, or decomposes to twenty plus three, and again that's hundredths. We'll divide that into two columns, decomposing my second factor. Now we'll start multiplying. Four times three is twelve. Four times twenty is eighty. 10 times 3 is 30, and 10 times 20 is 200. Let's find our, let's add each of these rows to find our partial products. I get tw uh, 12 plus 80 is 92, and 200 plus 30 is 230. We'll find the sum of our partial products to find our final product. 2 in the 1's place, 3 plus 9 is 12, regroup and we get 322. 322 what? Hundredths. We can convert that by dividing it by uh, 100 because that's the inverse of what we did in the beginning and this answer we know is 100 times greater than the actual answer. We can also use our rounding here to help us place that decimal and in order to get the correct answer we'd have to put the decimal between the three and the 2, because 3 and 22 hundredths is as close as we can get with those digits to our estimate of 2. Let's now do the standard algorithm. 23 hundredths, make a correction there, 23 hundredths times 14 and we could have done that just as 23, labeling it hundredths and multiplying it times 14. Let's begin. 4 times 3 is 12. Regroup the 1. 8, or 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And we can see that we have a match here between our first partial product in the area model and our first pro partial product in the standard algorithm. We'll put in our 0 because we're multiplying uh, from the tens place. And we get 230. We will add our partial products. And we can see that we have a correspondence between these. Now we know that we are going to place the decimal right there because it was hundredths. And we're going to, uh, from unit form to standard form. Let's do one final example. And then we'll go over a little bit of homework. Okay, now we simply have a uh, three-digit number here, uh, and again we can convert that, and that would be, without going through all the discussion, this would be 706 hundredths. Let's get that area model going. 
Now you notice that there's no digit in the tens place. So I don't have to do anything with that. I only need uh, two columns here. I have 700 plus six hundredths. Two columns. That will decompose the second factor. And we can get started. We have 8 times 6 is 48. I have 8 times 7 is 56 with our two zeros because that's 8 ones times 7 hundreds equals six, uh, 56 hundreds. Uh, going on with our second row, <coughs> 2 tens times 6 is 12 tens or 120. And 2 tens times 7 hundreds is 14 thousands. Let's now find our partial products. Pretty easy because we only have one non-zero digit in each one of our places here. And again here finding our sum to find the final product. Again, these are hundredths, so to convert them, we put our decimal in the appropriate place. I didn't do my estimate here, so let's, let's just back up and do that. Um, that rounds to 7, and that rounds to 30, and we get around 210. And our decimal will have to be right here. That's as close as we can get to 210. Um, otherwise, we could just think of it as hundredths. We changed hundredths. Uh, by multiplying it by a, a, a hundred to get rid of that decimal. Now we divide by a hundred. We get the uh, 197 and 68 hundredths. On to the standard algorithm. We multiply from the ones place and we regroup the four. Eight times zero is zero plus four is 4. And 8 times 7 is 56. And we see that we have a match. Now, <clears throat> working from the tens place, we put in our 0 before we get going. And I have 2 times 6 is 12. Regroup the 1. Go on with that. And we have the same partial product in both of these. Alright, let's uh, look at a few of the homework problems. I'm not going to solve them for you, but I'll try to help you with a little modeling and help you avoid some pitfalls. Eric's goal is to walk two and seventy-five hundredths miles to and from the park every day for an entire year. If he meets his goal, how many miles will Eric walk? I'm going to model very quickly this because we a lot of kids don't pay attention to this to and from. So I'm going to draw a picture that is to and we have to tack on from. So that represents one day. Another way to look at this is to just draw sort of a line here and we're assuming that he's walking from home to the park. He's going there. He's going back. He does that every day for a year. You need to know how many days are in a year. I should not have to remind you of that. But I think there's enough here to help you avoid the pitfalls and answer this question correctly. On to the next. Jerry spends $1.25 each day on lunch at school. On Fridays, she buys an extra snack for $0.55. Cents. 
how much money will she spend in two weeks? Let's model how much she spends in one week. Well, how many days of the week do we go to school? At our school, and most that I've ever gone to, we go five days a week. So we can model each day as a dollar twenty-five. And we have five of these. On Fridays, and only on Fridays, we could call this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On Friday, she also spends a little extra money here. You should be able to look at this tape diagram and figure out how to calculate how much she spends in one week. And of course, then we have to calculate how much she spends in two weeks.